We greet you this morning on this, the 15th Sunday after Trinity. Let's rise and sing our opening hymn, hymn 498. the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down, O Lord, thine ear to me, and hear me. O my God, save thy servant that trusted in thee. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I have called daily upon thee. Comfort the soul of thy servant. For unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Bow down, O Lord, I hear to thee, and hear me. O my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I have called daily upon thee. 
Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. you. Let us pray. Keep, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy church with thy perpetual mercy. And because the frailty of men without thee cannot but fall, keep us ever by thy help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Here beginneth the fifth chapter of the book, Ecclesiasticus. Set thy heart upon thy goods, and say not, I have enough for my life. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. And say not, who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering, he will in no wise let thee go. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. And say not, his mercy is great, he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation resteth upon sinners. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Set not thine heart upon goods unjustly gotten, for they shall not profit thee in the day of calamity. Winnow not with every wind, and go not into every way, for so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue. Be steadfast in thy understanding, and let thy word be the same. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 49, found on page 400 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 49 on page 400 of the prayer book. O oh, hear ye this, all ye people. Ponder it with your ears, all ye that dwell in the world. High and low, rich and poor, one with another. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall muse of understanding. I will incline mine ear to the parable, and show my dark speech upon the harp. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, when wickedness at my heels compasseth me round about? There be some that put their trust in their goods, and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. But no man may deliver his brother, nor give a ransom unto God for him. For it cost more to redeem their souls, so that he must let that alone forever. That he shall live alway, and not see the grave. For he seeth that wise men also die and perish together, as well as the ignorant and foolish, and leave their riches for other. And yet they think that their houses shall continue forever, and that their dwelling places shall endure from one generation to another, and call the lands after their own names. 
Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not, seeing he may be compared unto the beasts that perish. This their very ways, this their way is very foolishness, yet their posterity praise their saying. They lie in the grave like sheep, death is their shepherd, and the righteous shall have dominion over them in the morning, assume in the sepulcher, and have no abiding. But God hath delivered my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Be not thou afraid, though one be made rich, or if the glory of his house be increased. For he shall carry nothing away with him when he dieth, neither shall his pomp follow him. For while he lived, he counted himself an happy man, and so long as thou doest well unto thyself, men will speak good of thee. He shall follow the generation of his fathers, and shall never see light. Man that is in honor, but hath no understanding, is compared unto the beasts that perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the sixth chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, beginning at the 11th verse. Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, be not anxious for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than the food, and the body than the raiment? Behold the bird of heaven, and they sow not, 
neither do they reap nor gather into barns, and your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are not ye of much more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit unto the measure of his life? And why are ye anxious concerning raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, and neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God doth so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not he much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Be not therefore anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Be not therefore anxious for the morrow, for the morrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good to see everybody today. And uh, here we are. We're uh, our, our normal yearly round of stuff has begun again as of today. Uh, Sunday school was this morning. Um, if you missed uh, adult Sunday school, you missed a really good class and we're going to keep going with that, talking about um, the Holy Eucharist and the biblical foundations thereof. And so we're still going through some uh, introductory material and will be for the next couple of weeks. Um, so now's a perfect time to jump in and join us with that. And we look forward to having you. Um, also, uh, this week, uh, Tuesday Bible study begins with the book of Job, and Wednesday night is uh, the usual Wednesday evening Bible study, and we're going to be doing the book of Joshua. It's a J term, apparently, so we're, Cynthia picked her book, I picked mine, so that's the way it is. Um, and also, as is usual, Wednesday evening, choir also practices, uh, and our meal that we have after Holy, Holy Communion is at 6, meals at 6.30, and uh, Amy and Gloria, we look forward to that coming back back in to feed us on Wednesday nights, and uh, Bible study begins at 7 o'clock. Um, tomorrow, 
Dave Stackhouse's funeral will be here at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, and it's going to be um, a very simple burial office, so it won't last very long. Um, so I encourage you, please come out for that um, as we pay our respects. And remember David, um, longtime member here and uh, certainly a faithful son of the church. And uh, gonna definitely miss that guy. Um, so it'll be here at 11 o'clock tomorrow. There's no, there's no interment or anything like that going on with it because he's going to be interred at uh, the VA cemetery and they have all sorts of, shall we say, odd little rules about how you can bury somebody there. Um, and uh, even I'm not allowed to go. Um, so I, anyway, that's annoying. Anyway, <laughs> it really is. Um, and also Vestry meets tomorrow night at 6.30 in the parish hall. Okay, how about the blessing of birthdays and anniversaries? Anyone had one in the past week? Come on up, Bill Fishburn. <laughs> Birthday prayer is found on page 597 in the prayer book. If you would, let's turn to that and kneel and pray this prayer together. Let us pray. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be, keeping him unspotted from the world. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful, and raise him up if he falls. And in his heart may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our sermon hymn today is hymn 479.
today's gospel lesson, Jesus said, Be not anxious for the morrow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. The gospel lesson appointed for this, the 15th Sunday after Trinity, really represents the climax of the teaching of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. As you know, the Sermon on the Mount is from chapter 5 through chapter 7 in Matthew's Gospel. The Sermon on the Mount is, is the simplest and yet the most difficult of all sermons. It's simple by virtue of its uncompromising directness. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and riches. Therefore, don't be anxious about food, drink, clothing. The whole of nature rests upon the province of God. Jesus said, consider the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. And how much more should we, conscious, rational creatures, rest upon that providence? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to the measure of your life? God feeds the birds, clothes the lilies. Why are you then anxious? Your Heavenly Father knows what you need. Direct. Simple prescription. And honestly, the appeal is, is, is rather winsome, isn't it? In the maelstrom of this life of credit cards, power bills, taxes, cholesterol count, climate change, and all the rest, how lovely it is to just consider the birds and the flowers. They toil not, neither do they spin, yet even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed as one of these. Simple, direct, appealing. But is it possible? Could it possibly actually work? It's simple, certainly, in sentiment, definitely, but so, so difficult in actuality. O ye of little faith, says Jesus, seek ye first God's kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. The counsels, the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount are counsels of perfection. And much of the history of the church consists of the search for and the striving after that simple perfection of life. I mean, in ancient times, St. Matthew, whose feast day we'll keep later this month, he left the receipt of custom to follow a wandering preacher. Then there's St. Anthony, the first ever hermit. He gave away all his possessions and fled into the deserts of Egypt, renouncing the world of consumerism, if you will, the world of getting and spending. And then, of course, there's a pretty famous fellow by the name of St. Francis of Assisi. He was the son of an Italian nobleman. And he embraced lady poverty, that he might live as the birds and the flowers, simply in the providence of Almighty God. Of course, the examples of things like this are endless and manifold in their character, with the idea of seek ye first, the kingdom of God. But these counsels of perfection, I mean, what, what can they mean for us? Are they some kind of beautiful and romantic and yet impossible dream? But Jesus makes sure, makes it clear that his teaching is for the here and the now. Listen to what he says at the conclusion of the Sermon of the Mount in chapter 7. He says this, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, 
I will liken him to a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. What Jesus intends is a direct and eminently practical lesson about life in the here and now. And that portion of his sermon, which is today's gospel lesson, is an eminently practical lesson about our involvement in the world's concerns and the world's goods. You see, we are very easily seduced into regarding those things as ends in and of themselves. And that is what it means to serve mammon. Today's gospel will remind us that all the things of this world, however good, are not ends, but rather means. Means toward an end which is spiritual and eternal, which is the knowledge and love of God and his kingdom and his righteousness. Mammon is a false god. And serving mammon is idolatry. And it's the essence of idolatry, idolatry to trust the things of the world as though they were of some kind of final and ultimate significance. Idolatry is the worship, simply put, is the worship of worldly things. And it is a subtle but constant and ever present danger in the spiritual lives of all of us. That's what St. Paul has in mind when he says in today's epistle from the Galatians, he says, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. The point is not that we should battle or escape from the toils, satisfactions, and trials of life in this world, but that we should see all these things in their limitations, in the perspective of the spiritual end that they serve. I mean, who, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his life? Life's more than reaping and gathering into barns. The point is that we should see our life and our labors in the context of the providence of Almighty God, that perpetual mercy that we prayed for in today's collect, that providence which moves all things firmly and sweetly to their divinely appointed end. And then that perspective, how foolish is all of our anxiety. So seek first God's kingdom, and in his eternal providence, his perpetual mercy, all will be well. For if we truly follow what our Savior has said today, then we will not be anxious for the morrow. Amen. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, do we ascribe as most justly do great honor, glory, and majesty, both now and under the ages of ages. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven.
Let us pray. Dearly beloved, we offer the Eucharist this day in union with Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who continues to make intercession on our behalf in the heavens. Make your prayers this day for all those who are sick and suffering, remembering especially those of this place, for Allie and Child, Barbara, Brenda, Brian, Francis, Julie, Leela, Norm, and Randy. We also pray for our family, friends, and others who need and desire our prayers, especially those who remember now in our own hearts. In our provincial prayer cycle this week, we pray for St. Mary the Virgin Church, Delray Beach, Florida, Bishop Perkins, the rector. We pray for our school here at All Saints Church. And finally, I bid your prayers this day for peace in Israel and the Middle East. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours also may be acceptable in the sight of God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands to the praise and glory of his name both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. Grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, especially Joseph our president, Roy our governor, and all those in authority with them, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially Chandler, our ordinary, and all priests and deacons, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through jesus christ our lord amen almighty god our heavenly father who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through jesus christ our lord amen Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. 
If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, be to the almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dear and beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, and these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy Father goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. 
humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy son Jesus Christ be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him and although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father almighty, world without end. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Amen.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take, eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Alley, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving.
so that for the success of thy grace, that we may continue in thy holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, Let us pray. O God, the maker of the universe, by whose command the course of the world proceeds, be present in thy goodness to our prayers and vouchsafe in our times the tranquility of peace, that we may with unceasing exultation rejoice in giving praise to thy most holy providence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.